Hello and thanks for stopping by. This is Zombie Army Trilogy for the Nintendo Switch, and I'm playing this game on the Switch plugged into the dock with an external controller. I say this because the system is unique in its ability to be played on screen or portable. I'm sure portable is great if you're traveling or maybe sitting in bed. Maybe. But the detached Joy-Con controllers don't always lend themselves to every game like this one. I find this game to be painful to play unless you're using a standard controller. With the controller, I think it's great. Maybe you'll have better luck with the Joy-Cons than me. So, I have Zombie Army 1 and 2 on Steam, and I beat both of them already, but when the Switch released these games on one cart, all three of them, I was definitely interested. I mean, the ease of access, having all three games in one place, plus all the online stuff. And even though the game is fairly linear and it's repetitive, I do find this type of repetitive gameplay to be really compelling. This one is a lot of fun. Now, the Zombie Army games are third-person tactical shooters developed and published by Rebellion, and they started publishing back in 2015, this particular series anyway. It's a spin-off of the series Sniper Elite, which has three or four games of its own. Actually, this series started off as a mod to Sniper Elite version 2. It was ported to the Switch in 2020. The story here is based on an alternate version of the end of World War II. In the final days, the German army resorted to trying occult rituals to try and turn the tide of the war. The rituals worked, and zombies have risen and overrun Germany. You play an agent of some kind. You can choose between a few. Each one has specific starting weapons, but you can swap them all out at the start, or you can find new rifles along the way. You can switch your guns at safe rooms if you really want to mix things up as you go through the different zones. The goal of this game is just to survive to the end. Basically, this is you making your way through all the mazes of the game to get to the end. That's it. It's linear in this regard. There may be small variations in certain parts of the levels. You might not have to go through every single room, but overall, you're going to be funneled to the exact same spot on the level as the next person who plays this. The zombies in this one look great. There are corpse soldiers in all different designs and the occasional heavy gunner. The heavy gunner is usually at the end of the levels. A standard zombie, they're going to carry different things. Wrenches, clubs, and general tools to try to club you with. Occasionally you'll get specialty ones that have guns, but most have just handheld weapons. Your goal is to shoot them before they get too close and kill you. And after they drop, there's also a chance they might resurrect. And then you have to kill them a second time. You can loot most zombies in this game, but you only have a short period of time to do it. They're going to disintegrate if you don't get to them quick enough. This can actually be a problem. You might find yourself in certain areas where you're running out of ammunition. This basically forces you to try to be speedy as possible and move around. If you just sit in one place and unload all your ammunition, by the time you catch up to the zombies you killed, they will have disappeared. The best way to kill a zombie, of course, is with a headshot from a sniper rifle. But you do have other guns, and you have grenades, mines, bombs, and you can also shoot explosive barrels and stuff like that for explosions along the way. In total, you carry three basic weapons. You have your sniper rifle, you have a middle-range weapon, which is usually a shotgun or maybe a submachine gun, and you have a pistol. You have separate ammunition for each weapon. So running around, you're going to constantly be flipping through the weapons to try to conserve ammunition and make the most out of all the supplies you have. You don't have unlimited ammunition, and although you can loot most of these zombies, and you definitely should, they also might not have the ammunition you're looking for. Down zombies they can, that continually give you ammunition for the pistol you're not using doesn't really help the cause. Because of this, you need to get used to swapping weapons around. Sniper rifles, they're just not great to use inside buildings. You need to have some distance to aim. It's a third-person view game, so you're looking over the shoulders of your avatar. This is one I think you're going to get used to quick enough. And you press the L3 button to pop into sniper scope mode. Sniping is a lot of fun with this one, and you're going to get better as the game progresses. Just relax, get comfortable with it, and it's really not that huge of an adjustment. I find myself scrambling early on, then after a couple of levels, hey, it's not such a big problem here. You just get better at it. I think the biggest thing to get comfortable with on this one is just how each individual rifle handles and the distance you can use them for to more accurately get headshots. The truth is, zombies don't always walk in straight lines, they just kind of bob around as they shamble towards you. You can also see their glowing eyes through your scope and I think it's a pretty great effect. It's a lot of fun. I think the best part about the sniping in this one is the critical hit mechanic they have. This is kind of the landmark of the game, I think. It takes a little while to get your first critical hit, I bet. But when you do, it's great. Basically, the game freezes, and you get this frozen cinematic of your bullet making its way from the end of your weapon 
to the kill impact of your shot. Right when it's about to hit the target, you might get an x-ray view of the critical insides of the creature and see the bullet tearing through the zombie bone as you make the kill. It's a really clever way to display the critical shot, and when you start hitting them more often, it gives you this really awesome feeling of accomplishment, like you're getting to become an expert. Also, it's not completely unusual for bullets to kill more than one zombie at a time. When a group is coming towards you, it's not unheard of to have one shot clip through two or even three heads one after the other. I think the scenery here it feels period specific. I mean, we're talking destroyed towns and cities in the 40s, and I guess this is what I'd expect. There's plenty of rubble to walk around, and it just feels appropriate for the setting. There's lots of darkness, destruction, fire. There's occult imagery and just garbage everywhere. It's definitely not a happy place to be. Like I said, it's definitely a linear experience, and although you can hop over some obstacles, there's still this feeling of you being corralled to flow through a game in a specific way. Still, you do have to survive your way through it, and it's definitely not a walk in the park. I think they do a pretty good job varying the environment, even though everything is sort of dark and grimy, but they have some really great adjustments to the areas you're going through, and of course the level objectives can change just a little bit. We're not always in a city or a town or even the countryside. It's really a mix of all of these, and they all sort of feel uniquely designed. It's really interesting to see what the next area is going to look like, and having different goals from time to time is really nice. By different goals, sometimes you're just not clearing a horde, but you can also be in an area where you have to gather keys to open the next area, or maybe you have to clear a dock so a ship can arrive. The music here and the sounds, I think they're very appropriate for a horror game, which is what this one is, you know? There's a droning bass thump and it kicks off when you start to get to dangerous areas, and then the sounds of the zombies as they resurrect, or they scream, and it's really effective for gearing you up for a fight. As a sniper game, the focus here is being on sniping. I find myself wanting to hole up and just shoot everything from a distance, but the game goes out of its way to make sure you can't just do that. There are places where you can do that for a little bit of time for sure, but hordes never just lie back and wait for you. They pursue you. So you're going to find yourself leaving traps to try and protect your position. You can carry a few mines, some trip mines and some grenades, but once you get used to switching these and setting them up, they can definitely be helpful, but overall you want to make sure you're not boxing yourself in with any one sort of area. What ends up happening is, when they get through your traps, you won't be able to shoot your way out. So it's probably good to have an escape route. So you're going to navigate through levels, and eventually you're going to make your way to a section where you have to kill a horde. That's the thing here. You get all the individuals as you move along, and then there's going to be a horde area. At this point, you'll need to take stock of the area that you're in, and you have to determine the best way to try to defeat the onslaught. Personally, I find that the best way, usually, to take care of any horde is to really become familiar with the area that you're in. Because you're going to have to move around to stay alive, and you need to know where you can run to get away. Set up some mines, and then when you can identify the direction of the horde, kill as many as you can from a distance, of course. When they start tripping your mines, be prepared to retreat to a different area. You'll need to keep as much difference between you and the horde as possible, usually. At least if you hope to be effective with the rifle. Eventually, when you kill enough zombies from the horde, usually a beefy tank guy shows up with a machine gun. He moves really slow, and he reminds me of that zombie from the movie House. That horror movie from way back in the 80s, if you've seen it anyway. Great movie, a lot of fun. Anyway, this is basically the boss of that particular wave anyway. You have to get a headshot to stun him. Two or three headshots will usually pop his helmet up and off, and then another shot or two should kill him. Overall, it's not an easy task. It's certainly doable, but he's just not waiting for you. He is marching towards you with a machine gun, and he is shooting at you. You do get occasional cutscenes here to try to flush out a bit of the story, but it's really the story of the enemy imploding, and it's kind of the last thing you care about for this one. We do get cutscenes. The story is kind of irrelevant, but that's okay. I love the atmosphere of this game. I think it's creepy. I think it looks great. I'm a huge fan of zombie games, and it's just a great enemy in general. This one has this horde mode that you can play online with people, and you can pretty much just shoot zombies until you get bored, so have at it. Well, that's all I have today for Zombie Army Trilogy for the Switch. Zombies. Shooting. Sniper fire. Enjoy. Thanks for stopping by to take a look, and I'll catch you on another video.